Okay, let's let's discuss uh, and understand better what the dangers are with these devices that we seem all to be glued to. And, you know, we have this deal at dinner with my kids. It's like it go, the, the phones go in the middle of the table. First one picks their phone up, is either doing the dishes or is paying for dinner. Depends on what's going on. And, you know, it's really, really hard. If somebody, my wife's phone, phone, her battery went flat the other day on her phone. And she's like, right, we need to find someone that's got an iPhone charger. We need to find someone. I'm like, hun, we're in Monaco on holiday. We're going for a walk. And she's like, yeah, no, no, if we stop, if we stop for lunch now, I'm like, it's 10.45, why would we stop for lunch now? It's just that like, yeah, someone might be able to charge the phone, maybe just a coffee. And that kind of desperation to have that device and, and, and feel that they can use it, regardless of what it's for, for me is fascinating. But what's more, more concerning is as a dad with two daughters that are both at university, it's who's looking back at them through the camera, who's listening to them uh, through the microphone, uh, what, what, actually, what else is being done here to, to to watch or spy, let's say that, spy on what my daughters are up to? Uh, we need about five hours to cover all of it. Uh, I, it's, it's the kind of thing where, you know, on one hand, we all kind of have in our head, right? Okay, like we're being tracked, it is being collected on us all the time. We know that, we try to be smart about it. On the other hand, as a computer scientist who I build artificial intelligence, who you know, uses all this data, I really get deep in there and I am terrified over and over about what's going on with all of this. So maybe I'll start off with a few little ones and then we can dive deeper because we certainly can't get to all of it. So some of it is just the actual data that's being harvested. So we were always told, like, be careful about what you put on your social media account. Don't put your address, your phone number, whatever. And of course, like, that's good advice. But the vast majority of the data that's collected is passively collected in the background in all kinds of ways that we don't know that's going on. So if you just look at the trackers that are on your phone that sends data off your phone, there are thousands of those while you sleep every night that send data off to all kinds of unknown places. Sometimes the people who make the apps, but much more often companies that do advertising. So they're collecting data from lots of different apps and it has all kinds of things. So, you know, depending on your settings and People shouldn't think that they're so clever that they can use settings to get around all of this. Um, they can get your contact list, when you sent text messages and to who, your call history, other apps that you have installed on your phone. They can very easily look at the text that you've copied. Like if you want to copy and paste text, lots of apps just pull whatever you have on the clipboard there and keep that in case. Key loggers, all sorts of stuff. Tons of data being collected that way. Um, the microphone is being turned on passively when you're not using the app. The camera is being turned on by some apps to do that. They listen in in the background. They look at your face and see how you react to things. Uh, your location be can be tracked even if you have location services turned off. And then once that data is collected and shared, there's all kinds of other stuff that we can do with it. So using the artificial intelligence that people like me build, I try to use it for non-creepy stuff, but it gets used for all kinds of creepy things. They can find out tons of information about you. So demographic stuff, behavioral things, what your reactions are to things, but also when you're around other people and people that you might know and the, the ways that they do that are astonishing. Uh, even to me, someone in the field, and, and certainly I've learned from my TikTok where I talk about this, astonishing to everybody else. Um, and it, it you know, kind of makes you feel powerless in the end because there's so much going on and we can't really control it if we use these devices. Well, what will happen, do you think? Will it go full circle eventually where people go, okay, this is there's too much of this going on. I'm just not going to have a device like this near me or around me anymore. Yeah, I, I think we're, we get too much value from these phones to to be like, I'm just gonna go back to a flip phone. <laughs> because very little of what we do with them at this point is actually making phone calls, right? I could do really well on my phone without being able to make phone calls. We've kind of built our lives around having connectivity all the time. You know, I was watching some movie a couple months ago and a guy was like, okay, so I'm, it's like in the 1950s, I'm gonna leave the office and then from this time to this time, I'll be at this restaurant. Here's the phone number. I can be reached there. And then from this time to this time, I'll be at this other place, giving the phone number of all these places he would go. Um, you know, if we were to try to go back to that, it wouldn't just be sort of inconvenient, like that inability to get online and connect with people. It would really change the way that we've come to efficiently run our businesses and our lives at this point. So I don't think that's going to go away. At the same time, I do think people are very much getting to the point as they learn about what's going on 
to say this is way past enough why I, how are you even allowed to do this <laughs> to me uh, that, that's a comment that i get most often to the things that i explain that's going on is how is it legal for them to do it and basically it's legal to do whatever they want as long as they cover it in the terms of service in, in a lot of places so i think the path that we're on it depends on if i'm having a good day or a bad day it could go extremely dystopian and we're kind of there um but i think where we're ultimately going to end up is which with both much stricter regulation over this kind of thing, what data can be collected, um, default opt out. Some of the stuff that we see in Europe with GDPR, their privacy law, I think we're gonna see a much stronger push towards better regulation there, um, but also some technical approaches. So uh, Apple has recently released a new version of their iOS for the iPhone that allows you to stop apps from recording your device's unique identifier. And that's one of the main ways that you were tracked on your phone. So they've made it so you can just do a setting and no app is allowed to track you. All the big social media apps are very angry about this. Uh, I think it's great. It's a technological solution to a problem that we haven't been able to regulate and the industry is certainly not choosing to regulate. So I think like we saw in the spam email wars in like the late 90s, early 2000s, where there'd be spam, there'd be new filters. And, and now we're in a place where we don't really deal with a lot of spam in our inboxes. I think we're going to have that kind of escalating technological privacy war to where we end up with pretty good technological protection. And then if we have some regulation to go along with that, I think we will end up in a better place. But I think it's a 10 or 15 year proposition before we get there. And a lot of bad things are going to happen in the meantime. If you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast, then click over there. You can see more, or I'd be deeply touched and very grateful if you would just click over there and subscribe. Press the bell button as well. And what you're then going to get is all of the content we make. It's going to come directly to you so that you can enjoy it first. So please do me a favor over there, click on that subscribe button and press that bell button for us today.